Welcome to this UniLogic tutorial. UniLogic is the complete application development environment for our Unitronics Unistream control platform. Welcome to the Unitronics Alarms webinar. In this tutorial, alarm setup, implementation, and interactions will be covered. The Unistream alarm system was designed according to the framework provided by the International Society of Automation, titled ANSI-ISA-18.2-2009, Management of Alarm Systems for the Process Industries. There are two types of alarms, digital and analog. Digital alarms are an on and an off trigger alarm, whereas analog alarms are based on a range of values. In the following example, we will create one of each of these alarms. First, let's navigate to the HMI. Notice there is a predefined screen with a door and a thermometer. Each will be a condition for an alarm. The door will either be open or closed and will be the trigger for the digital alarm. The thermometer represents a range of values and will be the trigger for the analog alarm. First, let's set up the door's digital condition alarm via alarm setup. The alarm setup is accessible from the Solution Explorer and enables the user to define alarm groups and the alarms within each group. Select Alarms from the Solution Explorer and click Add New Alarm Group. By default, this will create an alarm group with a single default alarm within it. To edit the group name, Right-click the name in the Solution Explorer and select Rename. This is for programmer reference only. In the Alarm Groups table, you can click and edit the display name and the description. An alarm suppression bit can also be added and will disable an alarm group when high. The number of alarms in the group are visible here as well. While still in the Alarms group view, you can configure the general properties for all of the alarms by going to the Properties window on the right. The user can edit the default general alarm properties to suit their needs. Date Time Format will provide the format for both the alarm display and timestamp in the alarm log. The severity colors are background colors for the alarm display, both in the alarm summary and the alarm status viewer widget. The notification banner section determines if and how the alarm banner displays. The banner color, location, and size are configurable here. Sorting, clearing, and snooze options are available. Alarms can be sorted according to priority, time, or by group. You can stop alarms from being displayed in the scrolling window if they are inactive, have been acknowledged, or after a specified timeout. After you have defined a group of alarms, click the group name. This will show the alarms within the group. In this example, there will be a total of two alarms. The second will be added later. Each alarm in a group has seven unique properties. An ID, which is a unique number assigned by the system that cannot be edited or modified. A display name, which will identify the alarm in both the alarm summary and the alarm status viewer widget. 
a severity, which is the extent to which the condition impacts the program, a priority, which is the order in which we should resolve conditions, and then finally use checkboxes to determine whether an alarm is displayed on the banner and if it requires an acknowledgement. The severity determines the background color of the displayed alarm. To edit alarm severity and priority, click the fields and use the drop-down lists. If an acknowledgement is required, click in the ACBIT field to assign an acknowledgement tag. It's time to set the properties for the alarm one that was created within the group. Select the alarm's name from within the alarm group. This will bring up the alarm configuration. Here you can set the type of trigger condition. As mentioned earlier, there are two types of alarms, digital and analog. The alarm options are context sensitive, meaning that the type of alarm you select, digital versus analog, determines the options that are displayed. Let's define an alarm for when the door is open. The door on our HMI is tied to the door open bit. When the door is open, this bit is on. For this reason, we have selected the door open bit as our trigger and our operator as on. That way, when the door open bit becomes on, our alarm is triggered. Next, navigate to advanced options by clicking the advanced down arrow. Here, a delay time can be added before the alarm is triggered. In this example, the goal is to have the door open for 5 seconds before the alarm triggers. Set the on delay to 5 seconds. Below the advanced options are the alarm's description and countermeasures for the operator. The description and countermeasures provide additional information to the operator and help them resolve the active alarm condition. The digital door alarm is now complete. Next, add and configure a new analog alarm for the thermometer on screen. Select the alarm group from the Solution Explorer. At the top, select Add New Alarm. You should now see an Alarm 2 has been added to the list. To configure this alarm, click on the alarm's name. Because this alarm is based on a range of values, set the condition type to be analog. Analog alarms can be configured for greater than, less than, equals to, not equals to, or within or out of a range. In this example, the trigger of the alarm will be the temperature exceeding an upper limit of 200 degrees. Select the greater than operator. Next, we want to link our temperature tag that this alarm will be based off of. Now that we have our temperature, we need a number to compare our temperature to. In this case, that value will be 200. You could link a tag here to dynamically change this value. However, for this example, we will simply hard code 200. Note that because we selected the analog condition, we can set a deadband range around the analog alarm trigger values. A deadband is useful for alarms whose trigger values may fluctuate near the alarm trigger value. When the alarm's trigger reaches its trigger value, the alarm turns on. However, the alarm does not turn off until the value falls below the deadband range. For example, if your alarm's trigger value is 100 and the current value is 100, then the alarm will trigger. However, if you had a deadband of 5, the alarm would not turn off until the alarm trigger value fell below 95. The temperature alarm is now complete. When an alarm tool is added to a project, Unilogic creates an alarm status struct to enable easier handling.
Those struct members are group state for groups of alarms, alarm state for single alarms, an is any alarm active bit, and a number of active alarms integer. These members give the user the ability to use the state and quantity of the alarms in their ladder logic. Implementing your alarms is very easy. To activate an alarm, trigger the condition configured for that alarm. The trigger could be set many different ways, including through the ladder, the HMI, as well as project level actions. In this example, the door being open on screen for five seconds is the condition for the digital alarm. For the analog alarm, the temperature exceeding 200 degrees is the trigger condition. There are many ways that you can view and work with alarms. To see some of those ways, let's activate our digital door alarm now. By opening the door on the screen, for five seconds, we should see the green alarm button now become a red alarm banner. This is because the display on banner property is enabled. Because the display on banner property is enabled, from this view, we can now take a look at the alarm summary list by clicking this button. The alarm summary list is automatically generated by the alarm system. This is a list showing the status of the alarms that are currently active in the alarm system and is a subset of the current alarm log. Press the Info I icon of a specific alarm to view the alarm description and countermeasure instructions. Here, the user can also perform clear, acknowledge, as well as simultaneous acknowledge and clear actions. You'll notice that if I try to acknowledge and clear, we see now that there is a new entry that says that we have acknowledged the alarm. However, the alarm has not yet been cleared because the trigger condition, or the door being open on screen, is still active. To totally clear this alarm list, we must resolve the trigger condition by closing our door on screen. Now the alarm banner has been minimized to the small alarm button. And if I would like to clear the alarm summary list, I can click on this button. And by using the top row checkbox, select all of the listed alarms and acknowledge and clear. Now you can see that the alarm list is empty. The alarm summary list has a maximum of 1024 rows. Also on the alarm banner is a snooze button. This sets a time during which active alarms are not displayed in the scrolling window. When you press the snooze button, the banner minimizes to the small button mode. Note that this is only effective for an alarm that has not changed state. If an alarm that was inactive becomes active, it will be displayed even if the snooze is activated. To see how the snooze button works, trigger the analog alarm. To do this, I will turn my heater on to begin raising my temperature. When the temperature exceeds 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the alarm banner should pop up with our alarm too. From here, if I press the snooze button, you can see that the alarm banner minimizes to the small button mode, but it remains red and clearly there is still an alarm active. You can always return to the alarm banner by clicking the small alarm button icon. And from here, we can acknowledge that we see the temperature has exceeded 200 degrees.
Now we see a new entry indicating that we have acknowledged our alarm to. Even if we snooze our alarm to, if another alarm in the system becomes active, such as the door being open for five or more seconds, we should see that the alarm banner returns and lets us know that both alarm one as well as alarm two are currently active. To clear this alarm display, let's resolve both conditions by turning our fan on to reduce our temperature below 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and let's also close our door. Now that we have resolved both of these conditions, you can see that the alarm banner has minimized again to a small green icon. Here the previous alarms that were triggered are visible, and they can all be cleared and acknowledged. The alarm banner's location can also be changed by the user by pressing and holding the bar for two seconds. As you can see, the banner has now moved to the top of the screen, and if you press and hold for two seconds again, it will move back to the bottom. You can also use the alarm's history widget to view alarms. Here, you can view and sort the alarms, but not edit them. You can also use the alarm status widget for easy alarm management. From here, you can view alarm statuses, enter comments, and suspend alarm actions via Disable and Shelve. Disable will completely disable a single alarm. Shelve will temporarily disable a single alarm based on a defined shelve time in the alarm status viewer. Both the Alarm Status Viewer as well as the Alarms History widget can be found in the HMI Toolbox under Management Tools. In general, both the Alarms History as well as the Alarm Status Viewer should have their own respective screens. Finally, let's take a look at the alarm log. The system automatically logs alarm events in the alarm log folder on the controller's SD card. Logged events are alarm status changes, operator actions such as alarm acknowledgement, shelving or unshelving, and disabling and enabling. When the log reaches 10,000 rows, it is zipped and stored in the same folder as the current running log. Here, we see the folder structure of that SD card. Located in the Alarm Log folder is the Alarm Log CSV Excel file, an Alarm Log.xml file, as well as an Alarm Logs folder which holds the zipped version of our alarm log any time it exceeds the maximum number of rows. As a final note, the alarm interface of the status viewer and alarm summary has been translated into several languages. Selecting a default language, for example French, translates the interface elements into French. Thanks for taking the time to watch this Unitronics Alarms webinar. If you have any additional questions or if anything remains unclear, feel free to give us a call or email and we would be happy to assist.